Hey keyboard shortcut fans, let's quickly walk through adding a new keyboard shortcut to move rows up and down in the grid. As usual, you can download this workbook with all the VBA code and many other things from the website in the description. As some users know, in Word, you can use Shift, Alt, and an arrow key up and down to move rows in a table. For some reason, Excel doesn't have this shortcut. I wanted to recreate that in Excel, uh, but in a way where you can do it with a selection, where you can just have one cell selected and push Shift, Alt, up and down, and it'll grow it to the data range and move up and down as well. I wanted to be sure if you had two rows selected that you could also move those up and down at the same time. This is great because I do track things in a list, sometimes not based on source but based on the position I want things in. And for this, I also add a little functionality if you're in a proper Excel control T table. And if you push it up to the top, it won't go any further. And if you push it to the bottom, it won't go past that either. So let's dive into a bit on how it's built. The application on key method lets you hook up all these shortcuts. But you do need to know the special code to put in there. In this case, I have a plus percent and like a bracket up and down. So if you go to the on key event help, you can see that all the special keys have a bracket syntax or extra other things. So like for alt to percent sign, for shift it's a plus, you can combine them. So we just combine the shift, alt, and the plus, uh, plus the up arrow and down arrow to work. So let's set a breakpoint and then try to push this row up and step through the code here. So application screen updating false so we can prevent some of the flashing. Then we're going to check if we have a range selected. And so we can just do a type name on the selection, see if that's a range. If that is true, then we're going to want to grow the range potentially. So in this case, we're checking to see if we just have one cell selected. If we do, then we're going to go get the bigger range. And the way we get the bigger range is we're going to do an intersect of the current region plus the entire row. And so to drill in a little bit here, if we take selection current region and drop it into the immediate window and get the address of that, you'll see that it's from B to J, uh, 2 to 20. So that's the bigger block of data there. And then if we get the selection entire row, that's going to return 12 because we're in row 12, then we intersect those, and then we'll have the full row for that block of data. So once we continue stepping through this code and get the O range back, we'll put that into the immediate window here, and you'll be able to see the address for that should be B to J row 12, which gives us that whole row of data. And as we continue stepping through, the next check is to see uh, since we're moving up, if there's an edge for the up. So the first edge would be the top row. So if you're in row one, you can't go any higher. So that's not true here. The next check would be if we're in a table and then we're going to touch the header cell, then we should stop. But since we're not in a table, it doesn't apply to us. And then the next thing we want to do is actually do the move now. The way I do that is I just cut the selection, offset minus one to go the next row up and do an insert with that selection. Uh, and then I select the row that we just inserted. And then from there we're done. We turn on screen updating and you can see the results. And that's all for this episode. I hope you found the, the code useful and hopefully the add-in as well. And I'll see you in the next one.